So, King Oja episode 14, I thought that this episode was an okay episode. I don't want to call this episode a filler episode because Himino did have some growth and some development in this episode, but I felt like overall, this episode felt like it moved the story along like it needed to, but it felt like it was sort of slowing down the speed limit of what the story has been going on on the past couple of episodes. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because the past couple of episodes of King Oja has been bam 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 this episode felt like it kind of slowed down just a little bit now my main problems with this episode is the whole Jeremy thing in this episode you've got Himino thinking that Jeremy is the one that caused the wrath of the gods and she wants vengeance she wants to put him on trial she wants him executed and Jeremy being Jeremy he sort of plays cod and plays coy acting like oh um if you read between the lines you'll figure it out but because Jeremy being Jeremy, no one, no one can usually figure out what he's talking about until, like, the whole backstory needs to be explained to him. Now, in this episode, we did learn a little bit more about Himino's past, where she became queen at a very young age, or king at a very young age, and... Rita has this line in the episode saying that most of us were thrusted upon this king position unexpectedly due to the wrath of the gods or at a young age, so none of us were expecting to be royalty so soon. Now, at the start of this episode, you did get a really cool fight scene between Himino and Jeremy, where Himino just slaps Jeremy and goes all out because she's in rage mode, even makes him demorph with how much of an ass whooping he was getting. Now, there is a comedic moment where Sebastian shows up and then the monster that can turn into people shows up as well, and I just love how we've got two Sebastians on the scene, and because it's the monster, it does this weird wacky movement, like, like, it does like the suit movement with Jeremy as the actor so the actor sort of does that weird flopping your arms about su uh, suit movement as they run towards Jeremy in the episode so that got a laugh out of me but the fight scene between Himino and Jeremy was really freaking cool now the whole thing with Jeremy us as the audience, we assume that Jeremy wasn't the one that caused the wrath of the gods. Some people speculate it was, but I think this episode confirms that it wasn't him. Because Jeremy's alibi is, well, it happened 15 years ago. And I was sleeping 15 years ago. And there's an image of him in a scrapbook where he's in front of like a jail cell or he's napping. And Jeremy says, I was napping for that entire year when the Wrath of the Gods happened. So that's his alibi that he was around, but he didn't cause it, which was something we all assumed what happened. So we don't know who got control of God Cicada or how they were using it back in the day. Now, they could really sweep the rug from under us and say that Jeremy was actually there the whole time, but they've kind of already established Jeremy's alibi in this episode. And like I mentioned at the start of the review, when I say this was a Himino-focused episode, this was a big Himino-focused episode where most of the other rangers didn't play a role in the episode. I mean, Yama's seen for a bit, Dabowski's seen in the episode, but then he's seen at the end of the episode that's setting up his sister being trapped in the castle. Gira barely had anything to do in this episode, although Gira's got to lay low because he's meant to be a dead man. Rita played a role in the episode, but Rita put Jeremy on trial, and Rita had some good moments, like sort of explaining the backstory for Himido, and then there's that scene where Jeremy asks Rita, do you know of the Mofin anime, and Rita's eyes pop out, and Rita's like, I'm listening, go on, but we didn't get a Rita scream in this episode, I thought we were going to get one, but Rita just like, shrugs their arm to the side, and that's all they do, kind of funny, with over dramatic they are, but it is what it is. A reader's cool. I, I enjoy reader. I'm hoping that we can learn their backstory later down the line in the next couple of episodes because Rita hasn't had a big focused episode in a while. I mean, last week was kind of a Yama focused episode. Next week looks like it's going to be a Dabowski focused episode. So maybe we're going back in that direction where each week a ranger gets sort of like a focused episode, but it's also going to push the plot along. You never know. Now, this episode is also called Together with Mofa 
seven. And with a title like that, I can tell that this review is probably going to bomb. So I might have to make a really good thumbnail. Now, we learn that the Mofin anime was actually made by the citizens of Ishibana to cheer up their queen after the Wrath of the Gods happened. And in a way, it's the Vank their new queen that shown that the citizens will always love her like Mofin does. And that's a really nice wholesome thing that they did in this episode. And Rita also gives this speech in the episode where they say, the past is important, but you can't keep living in there. You've got to keep moving in the future or moving towards the future, but don't hold on to the past. Like, remember the past, but don't hold on to what happened and focus on the future. Now, I probably butchered that speech with what I was getting from my translation, but that's the way I viewed it, saying don't live in the past, move forward in the future, and do what you can do moving forward. The past is important. We can't forget about it, but we've got to move forward towards the future. But like I said, this episode, it was okay. Himuno had some really great moments, and in this episode, we saw the Shu Gods make their grand return. Uh, we've also had a moment where Himuno thought that uh, Jeremy was holding the Shu Gods hostage or taking them from their will, but because Gira can talk to him, Gira's like, no, nah, they're all friends, they all get along, they wanted to go. But... At the end of the episode, you have this cool moment where the monster of the week was this kung fu bug fighting monster. Had a really cool design. I feel like they might have used one of the old Shinkenja helmets for like the faceplate. It looks like they sort of extended the kanji that they used on those Shinkenja helmets to sort of add it to the new bug costume. I could be wrong, but that's what I thought with what they did with one of the costumes for the bug monster. Now, at the end of the episode, you saw God Tarantula in the episode. He hasn't transformed yet. They're saving that for next week, it looks like. But we actually don't get to see any of the mechs transform. We don't get to see King Oja form. But what we see in this episode is all the insects, all the shoe gods, team up together to defeat the monster of the week. No mech combination. They just wail on this one monster of the week. But... The monster of the week that can turn into other people, it looks like that character is sticking around because Jeremy wants to be the sixth king and rule over the entire kingdom, where he can make a kingdom where everyone lives in harmony. So it feels like that this bug character that can turn into other people and sneak around will probably be sticking around for a little bit longer, which I'm curious to see where that's going to go moving forward if this monster of the week is going to stick around. But the episode ends with Dabowski giving information to Raculus, and Raculus is like, ooh, we could use Jeremy if he comes to our side. And then Dabowski asks, how is his sister doing? And Raculus is just fine. And then we see her at the end of the episode in the castle, and she's staring at the night sky, and that's where the episode ends. So overall, like, average episode, nothing too mind-blowing. I've don't want to call it a filler episode because like I said Himino got some development in the episode which was really nice as that scene where the person who was watching the Mofin anime catches Jeremy and she says what's your uh Himino asks what's your reward and she says I just want you to keep protecting our citizens and keeping this country beautiful and that was a nice little moment in the episode but yeah, this episode was okay. Like, as, like, I feel like it was a good, ep it was an alright episode. Wasn't bad, wasn't good, it was okay. Maybe my thoughts will change upon it with other viewings and when I binge the show later down the line, but I don't want to call this the weakest episode. It was an okay episode, but that's my opinion, and I'm probably going to get crucified for saying it because it's the internet. But anyway, guys, what did you think of this episode of King Oja? Love it? Hate it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. With that said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Take care. Bye.